We're on the roof today. We have renowned guitarist Adam Rogers. Adam, it's great to see you. It's great to see you too, Scott. Always my pleasure. Thank you. You know what's going on in the career of Adam Rogers? <clears throat> well, I am uh, working on a new record for a group of mine that's called Dice. What's that song? Is it the thing you do for Porgy and Bess? I love you, Porgy. I love you, Porgy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I, the first time I ever saw you play, you did that. And I was oh, like, yeah? I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking like, again, like I'm that knucklehead that says like, as soon as I hear Porgy and Bass, I go, eh, what am I doing here like that, you know? And then, <laughs> and then to, to, just to sit through it is a thing. <clears throat> to be blown away by it, it's just like, you know, that just, I just realized my own ignorance. How do you get well, you're into not something? not that ignorant if it does something to you. How did you get into jazz? How did jazz become like, you know? Your thing. I don't really know exactly. My father, both of my parents were were Broadway performers. A lot of the the what are called jazz standards, like I Love You Porgy, right. come from Broadway shows and movies. I started uh, playing piano and drums when I was a little kid. I mean, like How five, five, six years old. Wow. What I'm constantly looking for as a listener for music is to basically have that same experience when I did when I was five or six, which is to hear something and go, With what all is that, that you know now? Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I became a musician. So if they ever come and hear me play, be and I do something, my mother will go, come on, man. And my father would do the same thing. Like, you know, I, I think, there are times where I've played where he goes, what do you, why don't you just play the melody more like he wrote it? Do you think that musicians are born or, or they can, you know, and this question is, you know, anybody, I, I, dude, I sing in the shower and the water will stop running. It's not pretty. It's really, I'm really sure that's not anybody okay. who knows me, this is for those who don't. But, um, so, but I love music, man. You come from both musical parents, I mean, right? Well, you know, one could say that, uh, yeah, I mean, both of my parents were musical. Um, had I been, you know, raised by another family, would I have been as interested in music? No, but you know, genetically always, you have, you know, the, their genes, so. So they say. I don't. <laughs> I just remember being f completely floored yeah. by this Hendrix record, yeah. you know, it was some kind of energy that I really, sort of like what I said, I didn't understand it, right. but something about it just really, really bowled me over. I bought whatever Hendrix, you know, are you experienced man, the gypsies, electric ladyland, the live stuff, whatever you could get. But I just listened to it all day long and sort of started to figure out what he, sort of the language that he was playing. Everything at the end of the day is in the musician and how much nuance somebody brings to something. Right. This music, that, like Charlie Parker, which was recorded in the 40s and 50s, he died in 55, and we're talking now 1980, 1981, I'm hearing all of this. Right. Because of the technical information in the music, this, this music sounded like this music from the future to me. Ultimately, the way you play music will reflect who you are. Whether you play classical music, jazz music, you know, it has to be powerful in some way. Yeah. I don't really think it matters what kind of music you play. 
Yeah, I mean, the more you yeah. do something, the better you get. It could be a cabinet maker. It could be a. But you also put your balls on the wall. You're saying, "This is yeah. what I'm going to do." There is no backup. Plan. Right. You don't learn how to play from sitting in a room practicing all the time. You got to practice all get the time. There you got to play gigs yes. and you got to play records. That's where you see. That's where all the experiments come to fruition or don't. That's that's the atom smasher. That's the particle accelerator. You've got. Um the, uh, the opportunity to play with some really great, world-renowned musicians. Mm -hmm. Playing with the saxophonist Michael Brecker, who was somebody who I loved as a, as a kid. And I played a little bit with Paul Simon, which was really an interesting yeah, and What cool did you do thing. with him? I did one gig with him. I mean, we played me and Julio down by the schoolyard and the boxer. You know, oh, what Walter Becker, you know, that was a great, really amazing experience. You, you worked with Nora Jones. How, how cool was that? It was great. Yeah. The first gig that I had touring was with this um, uh, clarinetist, and I learned a tremendous amount about music from playing with him. He was sort of an old school classical guy who did not accept anything but the sort of highest level from you as a musician. And night after night. Yeah, and would explicitly express this to you <laughs> if, if it wasn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> which was hard to deal with at the time, but was a tremendous learning experience. And he would, in a, this sort of classic way, tell you, what are you doing? That's like old this? school before old school. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, he came over and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm playing scales. And he goes, no, you're not. And I went, what are you, what are you breaking my balls for? I'm sitting here playing scales. He said, it sounds like you're you're doing your taxes or something. And I said, what do you mean? I'm playing scales. And he goes, if you think you can practice scales with that little involvement in the way that they sound and the way that you're articulating them, you're just wasting your time. And I worked with this guy whose name was Radisson Dyke. And he was a, f I'm not kidding. He said, in order to work with me, I want you, you got to do two things. Here's a physics problem. That, and he said, I want you to build me three beautiful boxes. And I went to the library and I tried my best to figure out this thing, which was like, in a body of water of such and such dimensions, how deep would said body of water have to be and how heavy a rock, so that if you dropped it from a certain amount of feet, the ripples would go this, right? Like. But I went, he said, I don't care, but hello. And then I came back and he looked at the boxes and he went, wow, these are really great. And they were looked at all of my notes, which were extensive. And he said, uh, you did a great job. And I said, he said, the boxes are, are beautiful. You put a lot of time into it. And uh, you did a great job with the physics question. I said, I didn't answer it. He said, it, you can't answer it. And I said, so why'd you ask me? He said, I wanted to see at what point you'd become discouraged. Wow, brilliant. Both of these guys seem like hard-nosed guys, and yet you... Well, some part of me probably knew because I didn't just run away from Yeah, but was it because they were good at what they did? Like, what made you stay with them? I don't know. So I'm saying, okay. I, I think my, my conscious reaction was, hey, God, what a pain in the ass this is, or this guy's right. breaking my balls. Some part of me probably knew right. that they were dropping wisdom on me. Yeah, there's just something yeah. instinctual too when you kind of know if somebody's breaking your balls that there's, the intention is is good. It's, yeah. it's, it's to help not to, you know, it's not their I shit. I think so, yeah. And you know? both of these guys that we're talking right. about were not masters of, you know, sort of communicating in a polite Bedside way. Bedside manner. No. <laughs> so that wasn't, right. which is fine. Most of the stuff that I do now, I would say is sort of along the lines of what I want to do based on purely musical considerations. And I'm into music for all kinds of reasons that I would, you know, at the risk of sounding a little corny for the, the you know, the spiritual side of it, you know? The, it's, 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 deeply, deeply rewarding in a, in a sort of mystifying way. The product is something that probably involves a little bit more of personal heart and soul and all of this stuff that's maybe not wrapped up in making an air conditioner. You are trying to take this thing, which is ostensibly the result of your experience in music and maybe, you know, to lesser and greater extents, the sort of spiritual involvement in this art and, and your expression. Turn that into something that you can 
So the inspiration that I, that I act upon from a John Coltrane or Beethoven or whoever is not to sound like them, but the inspiration I get is that they sounded so much like themselves and so unlike anybody else. So true. That's yes. what I want to take away from that. What can I do to, to find that you know, kernel of myself in all of this? Professionally, that might be the highest compliment that you can give somebody. It I absolutely think, is, right? if you have your yeah. own sound. And also, as I said, in this ancillary way, it also it, it heightens your ability to, to work. Because right. people hear you and they go, it's like the good club that guy said, is you want Scott Phelan? You, they, you're the only place Talking somebody... Talking to the camera, say that. <laughs> it's the only place you can get Scott Phelan is like Scott Phelan. <laughs> On this roof. But, but if you don't do that and if you sound like some amalgam of 20 different people, it's like, hey, that guy kind of sounds right. like... And again, that's like what we were saying before about... Ultimately, it comes down to your personality. If you're not willing to make sometimes what are very tough choices and to figure out what it is, who it is that you are, that indicates that you as a person are not willing to make those choices. And that's expressive of your personality. Right. Oh, you yeah. Know, you know, having a, a, a you know, 25, 30 year career in music of just doing music and for the most part playing the kind of music that I really right. love playing. I mean... Right, at the end of the day, the big picture is still a beautiful picture. I can't complain. Right? I mean, I could. Yeah, you've been blessed. I, Charmed life. You know. But you've worked hard for it. I know I've worked hard for it, and, I, and, and, I, and I thank you for saying so. But, you know, it's really, with all the things that human beings do, you know, this is a pretty great thing to have been able to do. So, I'm You mean I'm really this lucky. interview here This today. interview. <laughs> there you go. You've come all the way, man. Well, listen, Adam, I, I can't thank you enough, man. This has been an absolute pleasure, man. Thanks, you know, man. You're, you're one of the best uh, best guitarists I've ever heard. Thanks, one of the best man. guys I ever met. Man. Thank you I'm so proud much. I'm proud to man. call you a friend, buddy. Thanks, man. I thank appreciate you. it.